The brain appears to possess a special area which we might call poetic memory and which records everything that charms or touches us, that makes our lives beautiful. Love begins with a metaphor, which is to say, love begins at the point when a woman enters her first word into our poetic memory. Dear past and future sirs of my poetic memory, I just wanted to let you know that I am incredibly interesting. If I have more than one dream about someone I haven't spoken with in a while, I take it as a sign to reach out to them. I had a dream of you last night, the second one in less than a week. You had on a floppy canvas hat and you smiled when you saw me. We walked up to each other with our arms outstretched and we embraced in a hug that lasted for minutes and minutes. When I would pull away, you drew me back in in a way that I wanted you to. I dreamt of you during the storm last week too. I forget most of the details, but I do remember that we kissed. Morning, I'm about to quote the most overly referenced philosopher in Hollywood, Nietzsche. He claimed that there were two great European narcotics, religion and Christianity. If I had to add my own two cents to this list, I might include television and more personally, romance, which I think you'd agree with. My body is white when I first get up in the morning. I take off the sheets to see my legs are smooth and milky in the dim light, but they turn purple and swollen when I stand up for too long, or if I take a shower, or if I get nervous like I am right now. I have roughly 3,780 freckles. No, I did not count them. I don't like to waste my time. This is how I usually walk. This is how I can walk. Also, I can do this. I have a mole on the inside of my left eye. Here's a picture. I eat pickles at night to satiate myself and boost my probiotic intake. I let people harvest the lining of my uterus to get spending money for Christmas presents one year. Wow, what a heroic deed, you must be thinking. Well, I'll stop you right there, my friend. You should know that I have done terrible things. I love clogs and things that are tinier than they normally are. I hate almost all forms of judgment, but I love gossip. Did you know that 94% of people have intrusive thoughts? My intrusive thought happens to be the word fartball. I've had two dreams where it was my shitty housemate who didn't clean up after himself and made me drive him to work, which was two hours away. I want someone to have a secret crush on me. I run for the bus, dear, and while riding, I think of us, dear. I say a little prayer for you. And at work, I just take my time. And all through my coffee break time, I say a little prayer for you. Forever and ever, you'll stay in my heart and I will love you. The speech of Aristophanes. The original human nature was not like the present, but different. The primeval man was round, his back and sides forming a circle, and he had four hands and four feet, one head with two faces, looking opposite ways. Terrible was their might and strength, and the thoughts of their hearts were great, and they made an attack on the gods. At last, after a good deal of reflection, Zeus discovered a way. He said, Methinks I have a plan which will humble their pride and improve their manners. Men shall continue to exist, but I will cut them in two, and they will be diminished in strength and increased in numbers. So ancient is the desire of one another which is implanted in us, reuniting our original nature, making one of two, and healing the state of man. I used to get in bed early, 7.30 p.m. early, in 6th and 7th grade, to study my vocabulary cartoons and tend to my heartache by writing poetry about the mighty ocean of feelings in my chest. A poem. Love isn't jagged, love isn't rough, it is pure as clean water, but it can be tough. To make it out happy is quite a feat. Sometimes one's heart just skips too many beats. Can you tell that my 7th grade self who wrote this shitty poem was in love? If you think that's over the top, let me defend myself by sharing the story of a fellow lovesick comrade and favorite figure of high school history teachers, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. He writes, How often I have kissed my bed since she had slept in it, my curtains, all the furniture of my room since they belonged to her, and her beautiful hand that touched them, even the floor on which I prostrated myself since she had walked upon it. Sometimes even in her presence I was guilty of extravagances which only the most violent love seemed capable of inspiring. At table one day, when she had just put a piece of food into her mouth, I exclaimed that I saw a hair in it. She put the morsel back on her plate and I eagerly seized it and swallowed it. I hate books about precocious children. I spend a lot of my time thinking about food and the weather. I am afraid of loud noises and slugs, and I can't identify more than eight or so flowering plants by name. Here's what I look like naked. I made out with one of you in a movie theater at a showing of a Michael Moore documentary. You had on a muscle tank and smelled like grass clippings. One of you encouraged me to nibble on a peppery radish the tech staff handed out to the audience to throw at Vladimir and Estrogen later on in the show. Afterwards, we talked about the horrors of idleness and repetition, and bought a pint of ice cream from the market down the street. 
We sat down, and as I looked at you from across the table, I thought you looked adorable with your wire-rimmed glasses and reddish blonde beard. Another poem, a much better poem. The art of losing isn't hard to master, so many things seem filled with the intent to be lost that their loss is no disaster. Lose something every day, except the fluster of lost door keys the hour badly spent. The art of losing isn't hard to master. Then practice losing farther, losing faster, places and names and where it was you meant to travel. None of these will bring disaster. Even losing you, the joking voice, a gesture I love, I shan't have lied. It's evident the art of losing's not too hard to master, though it may look like, write it, like disaster. I'm confused mostly all of the time, but sometimes for a few minutes, I convince myself that I am the smartest person on the whole planet, and I feel so much better. It frightens me how easy that is to do. Is the lover ennobled by loving? The lovers sure like to think so. Joni Mitchell says, All I really, really want our love to do is to bring out the best in me and in you. I want to talk to you. I want to shampoo you. I want to renew you again and again. I wish someone would come down from the skies and tell me exactly what I'd need to do to be a good person. If I could do just one near-perfect thing, I'd be happy. They'd write it on my grave or when they scattered my ashes. On second thought, I'd rather hang around and be there with my best friend if she wants me.